Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Spin Master, and it's called Hail Hydra. For ages 14 and up, for five to eight players, Hail Hydra is basically a deduction game slash trader game in which you're going to play as the heroes in uh, the Marvel Universe as S.H.I.E.L.D. You'll have all the good guys, and of course you'll be fighting the bad guys, the villains of New York City. Your city is going to have a town health, depending on the game variant, and if it ever goes to zero, you're going to lose. However, certain members of your team are are going to be shield members while others will be hydra hydra is trying to keep the bad guys alive and mess with you while the shield agents are trying to defeat the bad guys if you can get through all the rounds of bad guys before your city health goes to zero you win the game let me show you it and how to play so here is hail hydra and everything it comes with including the game box and rules inside for the basic game and the more advanced game here here you're going to get the city board as well as the health track marker which starts at 27 and goes to one or zero technically depending on the player um, or length of the game and style is what, how much health the game is going to have. If you're playing the advanced game, it always starts at 27. Also, depending on the number of players, is whether you're going to have multiple shields and hydras in the game. When you're playing with five players, you'll have three and two. When you're playing with six players, you'll have uh, four and two, and then seven players or eight players. It, it'll, it'll depend based on the... Uh, based on the number of players with Hydra, the bad guys, and the good guys in the game. You're also going to be able to choose from this whole list of characters here. Some of them are actually uh, bonus promos I've gotten from uh, various cons, but the idea is they have their own special ability, uh, and of course it tells you how to play the game on the back of these cards, and they are all unique in their own way. You could be a good guy or a bad guy though, depending on these. It works very similar to Resistance, where you're gonna shuffle these up depending on the number of players, and deal them out to each player, and then, and then they're gonna all close their eyes and look at the cards cards and whatnot to determine if they're good guys or bad guys. So be these two are good, these two are bad. Um, not only that though, but to set up the game, you're going to take one of these guys here, one of these guys here, and one of these guys here in a stack, flipping over the first one, which is going to be the uh, villain to begin with, how much health they have, and putting health on there, whether they have shields or not as well, how much damage they do to the city at the end of a round, and their special ability. In the basic game, you're just going to be using three guys, but if you use the advanced version of the game, you'll take this final boss, and you'll utilize him as well, Red Skull, and he has a bunch of special abilities, as well as armor. Um, this is going to be for the player token here, and these are cards you're going to be giving out to players. Depending on the number of players in the game, you're basically going to be giving out a certain amount of cards, and throughout the game, every round, players are going to be able to play up to three of these cards, whether they be negatives or positives, in a pile, and then we're going to shuffle all those cards up and reveal them. So, for instance, if we just had it like this, where everybody played one card, uh, then they're going to take all these guys here, shuffle them, check to see if there's any specific ability these guys have, like this one says reveal the top two attack cards from the draw pile and add them to the uh, pool so that's going to actually be negative against him so that's not good red is going to be positive for hydra and blue is going to be negative but if you look at it like this shield members want to do damage however in this instance we have eight nine ten and eleven this is five six seven so seven minus eleven is negative which means no damage would be done to him however if it just looked like this it would be three four five six seven minus three is four which would then do four damage to him and destroy him getting to the next villain. Now, if you do not manage to defeat a villain, they're going to do a specific amount of damage to the city, one, two, three, four, and five, and then you're going to continue. Uh, certain variants of the game, everybody's gonna get a draw card uh, during every round. Other variants of the game, you're not going to get to, but when this passes, the next player is gonna get to draw a whole new hand of cards. And that's the basic idea. There's some special, special little things that go, go in with the advanced game, like utilizing these powers and whatnot, and then the basic game is where you actually don't have everybody draw, and instead, just when this thing gets passed to the person draws and which makes it a little more challenging for the good guys in my opinion and then of course the advanced game utilizing this final villain card all of these cards however are just either uh, blue or red and it's either for the villain or for the good guys so the objective is to defeat all of the bad guys before your city health goes to zero if you can do that you win if you can't you lose let's talk about it another quick caveat before we get into the review is on certain abilities it will say when you're gonna be able to utilize them like this one here says before attacks are collected in the rule book it gives you the exact time in which things take place and this would say like for instance hulk it would do four damage to both the villain and the city defense is applied if present next reveal the team's attack is normal but you can instantly destroy villains if they have low enough health and he's very useful for that but he devastates the city when he does that so he's a hindrance and a helpful person all at 
once. Spider Gwen can choose a hero other than herself, and uh, they, that player that she chooses must play their attack cards face up during offense, which is useful for villains and for uh, for uh, good guys. Captain America is able to vote twice, and so on and so forth. There's a ton, a ton of different characters to choose from, which is really nice. There's also a ton of villains, and they get progressively more difficult, and they have specific abilities and, of course, their damage on them. Sometimes it'll utilize stuff from the deck. Other times it'll make characters do certain things. Let's go ahead and just take a look at one of them. Abomination says if it's defeated uh, in the first offensive, he does damage the city eight damage before he's eliminated. So he actually does double damage if you kill him to begin with. So that's really tricky. You have to have the heroes figure out ways to work around that. And though it's funny as well as the good guys and the bad guys can actually put in a bunch of good cards because you'll never suspect it. So it changes the way the game is played. Uh, there's less of the basic one guys and of course there's the super big bad villain which is red skull and he has each revealed hydra agent can choose to forego playing giving or stealing attack cards to give red skull a defense that's offensive really good defense basically blocks attacks that go over and you can also choose to hail hydra during the um game if you're a bad guy at a certain point and if you do that you can damage the city and then you can't be removed there's certain rounds and the rounds are based on the amount of villains we've got here and uh every time you destroy a villain you guys can try and vote out a person and when they you vote out a person they are actually basically out of the game for just that specific round but if you vote out a good guy you're in trouble because the bad guys can hail hydra when they need to on the second or th third round so it can be very useful you don't want to do it too early as a bad guy though that's the basic aspects i didn't really cover um i i really think that the game plays exceptionally well in the advanced play I would never play this game again in the basic form that, uh, the basic, like, first time you play kind of variant, but it is a good way to learn the game, I think, especially if you haven't played a game like that this before. If you've already played a game like Resistance or any type of trader style game, you can skip doing the first, the first play thing and just go straight into playing the game. Uh, fully uh, as it is it meant to be played in the advanced version that's the only way to play this game and the reason why is because it, it gives everybody a chance to draw an extra card every round which makes it more interesting and more uh, dynamic as to what choices you're going to make it gives everybody their special abilities it gives uh, the, the bad, good guys a chance to fight the final boss and it gives the Hydra people more things to do and manipulate the game overall it's very very fun if you like games like resistance this presents a new type of new feel to it it's like a resistance meets a BSG style component with the cards face down meets a hidden character or uh, uh, revealed character abilities and every character has their own unique aspect this is probably the most unique thing about the game is introducing all of these characters and how they all have something different and unique that they bring to the game overall solid solid game as long as you play in the advanced mode check it out hail hydra by spin master i approve